Coming up next on We Are Marshall Today, high school students visit Marshall University. We'll tell you what it's all about. Plus, one of the nation's leading bank executives talks with Marshall students about the industry. These stories and more up next on We Are Marshall Today. Hi and welcome to We Are Marshall Today. I'm Leah Edwards. And I'm Bill Bissett. It's November and for Marshall University students, it's nearly time for finals and the deadline for class projects. Bill, it certainly is a busy time of year, not just for college students though. High school students are busy making choices for their future. Marshall University's annual college fair is an effort to showcase the university and its programs, but there are other colleges and universities represented as well. Marshall Recruitment Director Beth Wolf says the day-long event is a one-stop shop for most juniors and seniors hoping to find information. If they're just getting started, then their goal should be to get as much information as possible so they can really start to compare different schools and see um, what the different schools have to offer. If they're a little bit further along and they've started to narrow down um, their choices, then they really want to focus on those five or six schools that are kind of at the top of their list and really try to have a conversation with um, the representatives from those schools. Thousands of Cabell and Wayne County students attend the fair each year. Some students, like Marissa Matt from Huntington High School, know exactly what they're looking for. I'm wanting to go into psychology and I talked to Marshall and maybe even go into the National Guard and if I go into the National Guard then I get a free ride so that's what I really am hoping to do. Other students, including Elena Connard from Cabell Midland High School, are hoping the college fair will help them narrow their choices. What I'm focusing on is like the areas that what their town has to offer me, not just the school. And um, I'm undecided, but this will help me choose. Traditionally, the Tri-State College Fair was sponsored by the Huntington Chamber of Commerce. Marshall University volunteered to host the event two years ago, and Wolf says it's working well. It's a really great event for us. Not only do we get to bring 2,500 high school students to our campus, but um, we have 60 um, other universities and, and institutes of education, and so it's nice to have um, other people come see our campus as well. If you'd like more information about Marshall University, contact our recruitment office. Joining us now to talk more about admissions is Marshall's Director of Admissions, Dr. Tammy Johnson. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. We just saw a story about um, an open house, a college fair for, for high school seniors, and they're in crunch time mm -hmm. right now. Tell me a little bit about the admissions process and where high school students should be at this point in time. Sure. Um, ideally, students would start earlier than, than their senior year, and uh, I know a lot of students don't, uh, but, but ideally students would start in their sophomore year or even earlier for some students. Um, and and a, lot of, a lot of students go with their families in the summertime, they visit different schools, they sort of get a short list uh, together of schools that they're interested in. And then uh, over the course of the junior year and the summers between um, those classes, they'll sort of start to narrow the list down. And so ideally by the senior year, uh, students would have that list narrowed down to two or three schools by now. And um, what, what they really should be doing is, is focusing on the factors that are going to be um, the decision-making factors for them. So for some students, that's certain programs that are maybe harder to find at one institution than another. Um, for some students, uh, obviously proximity to home, uh, either either close or far away, is a deciding factor. And uh, for a lot of families, for most families actually, the financial aid package is a deciding factor too. And so we like to tell students at this time of year, if you've got your choices narrowed down to um, two, two's great, but even three is okay, that once you have uh, the information from those deciding factors come in, for instance, financial aid packages won't be finalized yet, and so those those will be available later on. But once those those final that final information comes in for those decisions, um, it's easier for students when they have it narrowed down to just those two or three. So, um, as far as the application process, then you want to go ahead and, uh, and apply and, and, and be admitted to the, those schools that are on your short list. So if you have it narrowed down to two or three, um, right now you want to make sure that you're getting all of the application materials in, that anything um, that a school asks you for, you make sure you turn that around as soon as possible, and you want to be admitted to all of those schools that are on your short list. Um, I think they really need to be aware because some schools have different deadlines for specific programs, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here at Marshall, um, you know, we, we have rolling admission, so um, a student can be admitted uh, up until a term begins, 
but for some of our scholarship programs and, and even for admission to some of our specific programs like nursing uh, on the undergraduate level and several programs on the graduate level, there are admission deadlines that students need to be aware of. And so uh, we always uh, tell them, you know, start as early as you can, get as much information as you can, and don't assume that it's okay to wait. And there's never an advantage to waiting. It's, it's always better, you know, to go ahead and apply, get everything taken care of sooner rather than later. So, so to recap for, for the admissions process, for seniors, they should be on their short list and taking care of those points. For sophomores and juniors, they're just in the information gathering stage. That's right. Ideally, um, for sophomores and, and juniors, um, they're going to be making some visits during the summer um, to, to some of the schools. And schools are closer. Obviously, they can do those during the school year. Um, you want to be attending those open houses now. And uh, a lot of schools will even offer uh, programs where you can come. And at Marshall, we do this, for instance. You can come. You can sit in on a class and uh, really spend time to, to take an in-depth visit at that school. Um, because truthfully, no matter what school you, you decide to attend, it's all about fit. And, and a school that might be right for one student might not be right for another. And, and uh, you need to really get past um, you need to get past the you know, what you've heard about an institution or uh, recommendations that you may have had from, from friends or counselors, and you really need to find the institution that's the right fit for you. And the only way to do that is to make a personal visit to campus and, and really get a feel for the institution. So, Can students um, do most of this online? I, I know you, you just said that they need to make a campus sure. visit, but as far as the actual admission work, can that be done online? Absolutely. Um, and again, the, the, the feel for campus, that's something that, um, and even, even today, a lot of that can be done online. You know, we have um, uh, obviously the, the virtual tours that students can take, and not the same as, as walking around campus, but it, it certainly will give you a feel for whether an institution is worth exploring further or not. Um, so you can do that online, and you can also, um, you can also chat with a lot of current students, and here at Marshall we do that. We have um, uh, students that you can contact and you can, uh, you can ask questions about campus life, and a lot of our students have, um, have blogs that they have out or video blogs, and so um, today more than ever I think you can get sort of a taste of, of campus life without actually visiting, um, although you know, I'm old school where that comes in. I, I would never suggest somebody attend a school site unseen. I think that you, you've got to be there and get the feel for it. But as far as the processes go, um, uh, you know, a lot of institutions have at least some of those things online. Here Marshall, you can do absolutely everything online, from from applying and, and paying the application fee, um, applying for financial aid. You can fill out your housing application. You can register for orientation. You can do just about anything that's that's a um, that's a business process or an administrative part of the enrollment process. You can do online at Marshall, which is really nice for our students. So. Now we've seen an increase this past fall in our freshman mm -hmm. um, attendees. Tell me. Is your office connected to that increase? Would you like to take credit for that, or <coughs> well, I think, I think address that, that, that a little bit? Sure, I think that that uh, that anybody who is involved with uh, with prospective students should take some credit for that. I think that um, it's it's never a, a job that um, that that any one person or, or one office is is. Uh, you know, can, can either take credit or blame for. But here at Marshall, we have an office of recruitment, and um, that, that is the charge of that office, is the recruitment of prospective students, and uh, they, um, they really take the lead on that. They make uh, the decisions as far as for what areas to target and um, what those recruitment initiatives will be, and so um, probably more than, than, than most other offices, um, they, they deserve the credit for that and, um, and for any uh, continued increases that, that hopefully that we'll have. Um, but now, you work in tandem with the office sure, of recruitment, absolutely, don't you? absolutely. Um, th this previous year, we, we worked more closely with them. That office was in transition as, as far as um, some of the positions there. and We, we worked much more closely than, um, than we have in the past. But, uh, but yeah, in, any of the student services offices, admissions and financial aid and um, any of the advisors in the colleges, um, those are all integral parts of recruitment. And, and, and a student, we always like to say that, you know, recruitment is from the first contact uh, in, until the student's actually enrolled. And, and then, you know, your retention initiatives kick in because you want to keep that student until graduation. But, um, but yeah, any, any of the student services offices, um, you know, you can, you can have good impressions nine out of ten times, but if you don't have a good impression that tenth time, that's really going to be a turnoff to a student and their family. And so we try to remember that and, and that, you know, recruitment, while certainly, you know, the, the primary recruitment initiatives occur in the Office of Recruitment, all of the student services offices are, are really geared toward customer service and, and we do our best to, um, you know, there are, there are policies and, and, and mandates and, and certain requirements that have to be met, um, but we do our best to help students meet that as easily as possible for them. So. And just uh, to finish up here, um, 
if a student wants to attend Marshall University but might not meet some of those specific mm -hmm. criteria, uh, we work with them, correct? Absolutely. Um, we, we always tell students, and anytime I talk with, uh, with students or their families, um, you know, we, we talk about our, our general admission requirements, which are um, a 2.0 general or overall GPA uh, and either a 19 composite on the ACT or um, a 910 composite on the SAT, or a student can have a 3.0 and a 16 composite on the ACT. So um, we, those are our general admission requirements, but any time that I talk with students, we always encourage them uh, that if, if, you know, if one of those standards uh, is, is barely missed, we encourage them to apply anyway because we take those things into consideration. Now, uh, we can't say that we will uh, guarantee admission for a student who doesn't meet our admission requirements, but there are a limited number of conditional admissions that we have here at Marshall. And so, um, for instance, we, we have students who just don't test well. You know, they're, they're good students and they're good kids and uh, they've done well in class, uh, they've done well in their high school career, but maybe they just get really nervous or, or they don't test well for whatever reasons. And so we understand that. We try to take that into account. And, um, and, and University College is a program that we have here for students who are conditionally admitted. Um, it's, it's a little extra help. Um, we sort of monitor their progress to make sure that they're ready to move in to their, to their chosen major. Um, but it's, it's, it's a mechanism that we have that we feel like um, if there are students who, for whatever reason, don't meet those requirements, but they're good students and students we want to take a chance on, that's, that's the place that we have for them. So. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, sure. for being with us today. You guys are doing a great, a great job. Thanks. We appreciate all your support. So. All right. Coming up next, what do cooking and dancing have in common with Marshall University? We'll tell you after the break. Stay with us. Marshall University has done so very much for me. There's more than Matthew McConaughey. And if you ask me what I'll say. Listen, coming from six hours away, Marshall University has become a home away from home for me. It's an incredible place to learn and ticket for me. There's never a dull moment. Marshall University welcomed state legislators earlier this month in an effort to encourage dialogue between Marshall faculty and lawmakers. Area legislators attended the day's session, which Marshall librarian Steve Tipler says was designed to generate ideas. It was kind of a chance for the legislators to find out about the university and for people at the university to ask questions. You know, maybe is our tuition going to go up or, or it may be a more deep and, and meaningful question, but you know, that's what the process is about. It's kind of a communication opportunity. Dozens of Marshall staff members and faculty attended the event. It was sponsored by several campus organizations. One of the nation's top banking executives recently visited Marshall University's Huntington campus. John Allison, who serves as chairman of BB&T Corporation, spoke to students about leadership. I only personally believe that having the right principles is far more important than how smart you are, how grandiose strategies you have. Uh, I believe in the end in the single biggest driver of personal happiness and organizational success. And I know we have a lot of people in this room that are principled leaders, and I look forward to your very important role. Allison's remarks were part of an event sponsored by the BB&T Center for the Advancement of Capitalism, which is part of the Lewis College of Business. The Marshall University community once again gathers to remember the 75 victims of the 1970 plane crash. It's been 39 years since the plane carrying members of the football team, coaches, staff and supporters crashed just short of the runway at Tri-State Airport. All 75 aboard, including the crew, were killed. Each year, the university community honors the victim's memory with a ceremony November 14th. Helping out the United Way is front and center for the Marshall University community this month. Promotional activities started November 9th in the Memorial Student Center. One of the more popular fundraisers for the campaign is the opportunity for staff members to wear jeans to work. Staffers are permitted to wear jeans on selected days during the campaign, provided they purchase stickers supporting the United Way. The campaign will continue through the end of December. More than 100 high school singers recently had the opportunity to learn at the college level thanks to Marshall University's Department of Music. Students from across West Virginia and Ohio attended the 2009 Festival Chorus earlier this month. The two-day event offered students the chance to sing alongside Marshall University's Chorus and Chamber Choir. 
From singing to dancing, Marshall University students had the spotlight recently. Celebrity chef Jamie Oliver brought his crew to Marshall's Huntington campus in November to promote his healthy eating show scheduled for network television next year. The students participated in what's called a flash mob, which is where sudden orchestrated activity breaks out in the middle of a public place. The Jamie Oliver Project is expected to wrap up its production here around Thanksgiving. As we said earlier in the show, the fall semester is coming to a close in just a few short weeks. That's right, Leah, and that means graduation for hundreds of students. More in this report from Dr. Christopher Swindell. From a cap and gown fitting to finding a class ring, Marshall University's graduation celebration has it all. The annual event is a one-stop shop for graduating seniors who have a long to-do list. I'm looking uh, to make sure I have everything I need. I'm looking for some career advice. And I'm also looking at uh, graduation preparation if I need to go to any type of rehearsals and if it'll schedule with my employment already I have. Alumni Affairs, Financial Aid, and the Registrar's Office are among the offices participating every year. Manager Mike Campbell says the one-stop concept is beneficial for everyone. And it's a very exciting time for us. It's, it's, it's a time for us to celebrate the achievements of our graduating seniors. So for two days we bring all of our uh, uh, offices that that they need to do you know have association with from alumni to the bookstore to financial aid uh, in one place for them to come and uh, secure everything they need to graduate. Registrar Roberta Ferguson says it's been 70 years since Marshall University marked an actual winter commencement. Last year we held a convocation ceremony uh, at the Keith Albee and we found that the venue was too small so we've moved the event to the Henderson Arena, the Cam Henderson Center Arena. And uh, the other change this year is it will be an actual commencement. Degrees will be conferred by the president of the university. This is the first time since 1939 that the university or then Marshall College has held a mid-year commencement. So we're very excited to have this opportunity for our graduates. The winter commencement is scheduled for Saturday, December 5th. For We Are Marshall Today, I'm Dr. Christopher Swindell. Joining us now to talk about Marshall University's outreach opportunities is Dr. Rudy Pauly, our Associate Vice President for Outreach and Continuing Studies. Dr. Pauly, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Glad to be here. Excellent. Well, I know uh, you and I have worked together on a lot of different projects mm -hmm. and obviously formerly headquartered in South Charleston. You're kind of splitting your time between the South Charleston campus, the Huntington campus, and many other places right. around the state of West Virginia. Tell us a little bit uh, about your previous position and what you're doing now. Sure. I started with Marshall uh, Bill in 1998. Uh, I hired in as a faculty member in the elementary and secondary education graduate program in South Charleston. And I kind of gravitated into uh, being program director for that, uh, that area for six years, actually. Then in 2006, I was named interim dean of the uh, Graduate School of Education and Professional Development and held that job until uh, uh, July 1 of this year. And at that time, I assumed the, uh, the role of uh, Associate Vice President for uh, Outreach and Continuing Studies. Excellent. And obviously, when I think outreach, uh, you know, you obviously immediately think West Virginia. I know it can be beyond that, but you have the physical structures, obviously, where Marshall offers classes throughout the state. Tell us, I mean, obviously, we hear a lot about Mid-Ohio Valley Campus in Point Pleasant, but tell us about some of the other ones that we're out there, too, and obviously South Charleston, which you can see from the interstate as you travel through the Canal sure. Valley. Sure. Uh, outreach is uh, uh, it's very broad these days. Uh, mm -hmm. As you mentioned, we have the Mid-Ohio Valley Center in Point Pleasant, uh, which is a wonderful campus, a beautiful facility that actually we're celebrating 15 years there this year. Excellent. We also have a, a facility in the Taze Valley, the Hurricane, the, the Taze Valley Regional Center, uh, and we uh, offer a full component of courses there. We also serve uh, the southern counties of West Virginia from the Southern Mountain Center, which is a co collaborative agreement uh, between us and Southern West Virginia Community and Technical College, serving the students uh, uh, in the southern region. We also have a f uh, physical presence, I should say, at the Beckley Higher Education mm -hmm. Center. And that's relatively new. We've been in that facility about two years, though Marshall has had a presence in the uh, Beckley area for about 25 years. So but we've expanded moving into the new center. And of course, we have uh, South Charleston campus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but outreach, you know, in this day and time of technology, uh, outreach uh, 
pretty well knows no borders. We have a full component of online courses, and that's an expanding piece uh, of the work. So outreach is a very, uh, very broad term these days. Excellent. Well, I know you have an extensive educational background, but uh, and we have the online coursework, but obviously this is both graduate and undergraduate courses being offered in these locations, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and I forgot to mention uh, in the previous question, uh, we also, uh, one of the components of the Office of Outreach and Continuing Studies is our military RBA centers, and mm -hmm. we have a, a very active cadre of military uh, students, uh, folks that are in the military service that are taking uh, courses toward their Regents uh, Bachelor's uh, of Arts degree mm -hmm. in Martinsburg. Uh, we uh, do offer both graduate and undergraduate. I, uh, for the past 10 years I've dealt primarily with graduate studies, but moving into this job I also deal now with undergraduate work on a pretty much uh, more so than, than graduate. Uh, so we have uh, a, a lot of different venues. Uh, for the first time, uh, we're offering undergraduate courses on the South Charleston campus beginning in January 2010. Mm -hmm. We're offering five or six core courses, so awesome. it'll give an opportunity for not only high school students that want to get a taste of college and hopefully attract them to the, the main campus here, but also the working adult that wants to come back for uh, further training. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that can be somewhat of a daunting idea to go back to school as a non-traditional, as they're called, or adult student. I know that sounds offensive to our undergraduates, but you know the people who have been in the workforce and coming back, but obviously professionally you're very well qualified, Dr. Pauly, but also personally you're someone who kind of came back uh, after a few years of receiving your undergraduate. Absolutely. Uh, actually, uh, I... Um my come from a family business background. Mm -hmm. The first 15 years of my professional career, I worked in a family business. And at one point I said, okay, we, uh, I need to do something different. And actually I went back and I had not completed my bachelor's degree. Wow. So as a working adult, I went back and completed my, my master's, uh, master, my master's mm -hmm. uh, and doctorate. Excellent. And uh, I did the same thing. And it's, I think that's important, especially when you have a program like the RBA program that is so supportive and, and helps people who have 80, 90, maybe even 100 hours of college education to finish. And uh, your work experience ties into that. It's a very positive program, not just, I think, for Marshall University, but to helping the state of West Virginia. Absolutely. Uh, we're looking at the current numbers. And just at Marshall uh, alone, there are probably several thousand students who have uh, many hours toward a degree that have not completed. And one of the uh, challenges for my new role was to go out and target those uh, those folks, to entice them back through the RBA or other programs, and see if we can entice them to come back and complete their degree at Marshall. Well, the benefits may seem obvious uh, about an RBA, but what, what do you think they are? Because I know I was, it, it was an, almost a no-brainer to me that I had to finish that degree. But when, you, when you're telling someone about it, what do you tell them? Actually, it used to be, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very big believer in uh, adult learning and in higher education. It used to be a much harder sell than it is today, Bill. What we're finding today, people come to us knowing the benefit. I mean, uh, upgrading uh, their job skills, uh, seeing new opportunities. Uh, I think the, the public, uh, and it may be a, by virtue of the online environment, the people are very aware of what uh, the benefits of further education can be. Uh, so it, it's usually a pretty easy sell. I mean, you look around and the RBA program will get you your foot into law school or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. a good friend of mine is a very successful attorney who started with RBA and graduated with a law degree from UVA. There, there's obviously no stigma anymore about Not it. Not at I all. Think, if anything, I think it combines that wonderful work experience with the education. Yes. It shows the eagerness, the the uh, the the, the guy to wanna, if you will, mm -hmm. about wanting to complete and and compete in today's uh, workforce. Outstanding. Well, I know you mentioned the South Charleston campus uh, being the only physically located doctoral program in the Kanawha Valley. Tell us. Yeah. I know, and you're, I know you're a part of the cooperative program, but tell us a little bit about that. I know we're running a little low on time. But. The uh, we have an education doctorate that's available in South Charleston mm -hmm. on the South Charleston campus. I believe we've been involved uh, as a standalone program for about five years. In fact, uh, was involved in the initial startup of that, and uh, we have currently we have about 120 active doctoral students that uh, that are pursuing the degree through South Charleston. 
Uh, they come from all walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, all types of backgrounds. Uh, we have the leadership uh, area of emphasis and the curriculum instruction. So we, we have an excellent cadre, great students from all over the state. And obviously, if you want to learn more about any of these programs, check out our website at marshall.edu. That's exactly right. Excellent. Well, Dr. Polly, we appreciate you spending some time with us and wish you all the best in the new role. Thank you. All right. And now, before we go to the break, let's meet another member of the Marshall University alumni family. Nancy Campbell is a 1979 graduate of Marshall University. Nancy makes her home at just outside of the Philadelphia area and is a managing attorney with Kennedy, Campbell, Lipsky, and Dockney. Nancy currently serves as the president of Marshall University's Alumni Association Board of Directors. Nancy Campbell, another member of the Marshall University family, spreading the word about the herd. Yeah, we had a pretty good rehearsal today. We blocked Act 2. and No, we're going to block Act 3 next week, I think. Are you okay? What's going on? I can't find the glasses I need. Haven't you tried MU Online? You can take your classes anywhere, anytime. All you need is a computer. Really? Yeah, look it up. I've been looking for this class all week, and now, since it's online, I can take it whenever I want. Nationally accredited. Affordable. Convenient. MU Online. More than 1,000 runners recently hit the pavement in Huntington for the annual Marshall Marathon. Videographer Mike Powers talks with race director Tom Daniels about this year's marathon. The idea is to promote good health. And we started this race before all this talk about obesity in West Virginia, uh, before people uh, got us on national TV. Uh, we started this uh, with our organization called HealthyHuntington.org because that's what we want to do. Our motto is really to say exercise is fun. Everybody out here is going to have a good time. That's what we really hope for. We don't offer money. Uh, we, uh, a lot of people just come out here just to say, boy, I'm having a good time. I'm participating in something. Some people are coming over here to do a marathon in West Virginia because they've never done one before. Some people want to see what it's like to have a flat marathon in West Virginia. Uh, some people are here to qualify for the Boston Marathon, and we have a lot of people do that. But really, the idea is uh, exercise is fun, and a marathon was missing from Huntington. Uh, people from around 40 different states uh, are here, uh, over a thousand people, half of them come from out of town who are seeing Huntington for the first time, and they're having a good time. We've grown a little bit, uh, a little bit beyond uh, last time, so we're over 1,100 people uh, out here today. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. People, we get a good reputation. We're friendly, is what everybody says. Uh, we've got a pretty good organization for a small town race. You know, we're not a Boston Marathon. We're not New York City Marathon. Uh, we have roads which are open. Ours is a lot smaller type of uh, deal, a smaller race committee that goes into this. But the people who are involved are super enthusiastic. They're, they're out smiling. They're up here at 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, they're, they're willingly there, smiling away, saying, boy, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to help this cause. I want to say, hey, th this was a, a great race in a great city, at a great university. I had a good time today. I had fun today. I'm Leah Edwards. Thanks for watching. And I'm Bill Bissett.